Hello, hello. Hi, hi. Welcome to this episode of Hearty Tips with Silka. That's me, Silke Hendel here, founder of Heart for Art and Paint Club, my online painting community where I teach people a new painting every month. Today, 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 I'm going to answer a few questions about what art supplies to get, what's the best, what's the best thing to paint on, um, what's the best paint to get, questions like that, and I will let you in on my favourite paints that I use and favorite things that I use um, so if you're new to painting or you're still learning you know there's so many so many brushes so many different types of brushes and there's a few more there and everywhere honestly so many different types of brushes paints canvas art paper etc there's just so much available to choose from it can be so confusing and a little bit overwhelming as well just to figure out what the right stuff is for you um, and then, you know, do you get the cheap stuff or do you pay top dollar for the professional grade stuff? Who knows? Okay, well, actually, I do, and that's what I'm going to share with you today, you know. Now, some people will just rush out and take a big guess at what they should be buying if they're not, you know, if they're not actually familiar with what they should be getting, or they think they need to spend more money to get the best quality materials, but that's just not true. Um and, you know, they may end up just getting the wrong supplies and all supplies, you know, they won't even use or worse, spending more than they actually need to. So today I want to just clear all that up and I'm going to answer some questions that you may be asking yourself as well. And I'm going to help you know just what, what to actually buy. All right. Now, the reason I'm sharing this today is we just did a Q&A session in Paint Club, my online painting community, and I had a few questions from Brenda, one of our paint clubbers. Hi, Brenda, about supplies and how to know which is the best to get, essentially. She asked about different things you can paint on and which is best, what's the best paint to use, questions like that. And she wanted to know what my favorites are as well. I do have my favorites. Um, so thank you, Brenda, for asking those questions because this is the kind of these are the kind of questions um, that I get asked so often. So I thought I would share the answers with you here instead of just in our private Facebook group for Paint Club, um, just because I know there's other people that might find this useful and might be looking for those answers as well. Hi, Melissa. Good to see you here. Um, now, before we dive in, it just so happens that I've already done a video that answers most of the questions. So I'm going to give you a summarized version of it today. And if you want to dive deeper, you can. Um, you know, some of the questions you might have about art supplies and what to get. And I also have a free shopping list of basic must-have art supplies that you can download and print. All right. Easy. Many, many, many pages. Lots of useful information in that as well. Um, and both of those, the video and the download, include tips on where to shop for best prices as well. It's going to make buying your art supplies and getting set up with the right materials super easy and super quick. All right. So if you're at the stage where you don't have art supplies yet and you're not sure what colors to even buy or brushes and you want advice on what supplies are right for you, type PDF in the comments and I will send you a link to download my artist supply shopping list um, and shopping guide. So just type PDF in the comments or type video in the comments if you'd like me to send you the link to watch uh, the video I did that gives you a lot more detail about everything. Um, they're both absolutely free, so no commitment, no nothing. Just I just want to help you get set up with the right supplies. So that's out of the way. Let's dive in. First thing to remember when you're buying your art supplies, you don't have to spend a fortune, okay? In fact, you shouldn't spend a fortune, especially if you're just getting started or you're just doing it for a hobby, um, you know, or something to give you a bit of a creative boost or maybe a bit of healing or relaxation time. You don't need to spend a fortune, okay? Um I mean, that's especially true um, 
if, like like I said, if, if you're starting, you just don't want to go straight out and get those high expensive things. You just don't need them. All right. Now, there's essentially three grades of well, well, there's probably there's probably more technically, but basically, there's three main grades of art supplies. You, there's there's the budget uh, or the kids version of art supplies. There's the student grade in the middle, and then there's the professional grade at the top. Now, the budget supplies and kids stuff. I don't recommend those if you want to actually learn and get a little better at painting. You won't be able to do as much with those other than just get color on. Uh, you won't be able to blend as well. You won't be able to mix your colors as well. They're, they're pretty basic just for getting color on. And they that's what they're designed for. They don't need to be you know, better quality because they're designed mainly for kids. So, and kids don't really care about all that stuff. So they're pretty basic, but if you want to learn all the blending and, and different techniques and stuff, um, I would not recommend getting the budget supplies or the kids stuff. Um, so that's at one end and then at the other end of the scale, um, you've got the professional stuff, you know, that's the stuff that's going to be more expensive than you actually need, you know. I kind of think about it as like, for me, like a, a bottle of expensive wine. Um, I like a glass of wine, but I'm not a connoisseur. So I won't really probably notice the difference between, you know, a $15 bottle of wine and a $115 bottle of wine, to be fair. <laughs> um, so, you know, that extra spend is wasted on me because I'm not, I'm just not in that realm of, understanding the bouquets and the flavors and stuff i just like a glass of red wine um so it's the same the same is true with art supplies unless you're an absolute professional selling your art um you know and you need that really top grade stuff you're always going to be better off just getting the more affordable option instead of spending too much money on that professional grade stuff um you know which is just going to be more than you need um so I highly recommend going for somewhere, not the kids stuff or the budget stuff or the professional stuff. I highly recommend it going middle of the ground, you know, Goldilocks just right. Student grade supplies in the middle, which are really great quality and will get you great results. And it's what I use as well. OK, now I've sold loads and loads of paintings over the years created with student grade paints. So you don't need to spend a fortune and get the best quality supplies. Student grade is absolutely fine. Um, you know, it's about the art and what you're creating. I don't know that I've ever, I mean, if you're looking at a Monet or a Van Gogh perhaps, but I don't know that I've ever come across anyone that says, oh, I like that painting, but what type of paint did you use? You know, nobody, when they're looking at art, um, it's not about what quality of stuff you used. It's about the art itself so yeah so it doesn't really matter as far as getting the professional stuff and if you're just dabbling and having fun anyway then the student grade stuff is all good it's just fine now i'm sure you'll already know moving on i'm sure you already know to paint you need the following you need something to paint on and you need something to paint with so first question from brenda what's the best to paint on now, there's several options. Uh, you can get art paper. Now, I happen to have a Bockingford sketch pad here that you can paint on as well. I've painted on this with gouache and stuff. You can get art. You can get canvas pads. These are really good. It's like a, it's like a canvas. Um, I don't know how close I can. You probably can't see it. See, see it's got that canvas texture to it. Um, but it's just in a pad. These are awesome. They're really good for framing later. Um, if you want to put them in a frame. Hi, Rena. Hey, neighbor. How you doing? Good to see you here as well. Um, these come in different sizes as well. Um, and of course, there's art boards. Um, so this is like, this is canvas as well. So you can see it's got the texture on it, but it's a board. It's a nice hard board. So these are really good if you just want to paint on something that's not quite as flimsy as um, your pad um, and a little bit firmer. And, of course, um, we have the canvas, which is the same thing. Oh, you can see my light reflected there. Ooh. 
well that's kind of like a fun game no i'm not gonna get distracted i'm like a cat with a laser light <laughs> um so your canvas is the same as your pads and your boards but it's stretched onto a frame which makes it great for just your paint and you hang it up done brilliant awesome and easy um now i've given more detail about all of these in the pdf and the video that i've already done so if you want a bit more detail go on go on check those out ask for those um, but the first thing to know about what you're painting on you know as the artist you get to choose whatever is best for you all right there is no one is better than the other um, there is no best it's really whatever you prefer you know or what you like better or what works better or suits your style better you know um, you know and if you're not sure try some out go and have a play go and get creative for an afternoon and you'll soon you'll soon see you'll soon know what you like what you prefer um you know and you'll have a bit of fun experimenting as well you know be great um hi leah great to see you here um she's asking how i frame the thin canvas i'm assuming you mean the paper um you literally just you buy a frame you take the glass out and you can put it in easy you can have it professionally framed if you want to but that's going to cost you more um but if you have a frame already you know you just go and buy a frame at, at the warehouse or whatever um and you can pop it in the frame take the glass out put it in done yay paint it to size obviously um but if you're talking about this frame um, you buy them like this. They come already framed. So this has got a wood frame on it, um, and it comes like that. You buy them already framed, and you can hang them up. Hope that's what you meant. Cool, cool. Um, so, yes, the, the first, the best to paint on, it's entirely up to you and what you want to, what suits you, okay? Um, if you're not sure, go and have a practice on some of them. Just get a little sample of each and try it um, and see what you think. Um, second thing to keep in mind, um, pick something that's fit for purpose, essentially, as in your purpose. They all have different sort of um, things that you can do with them. So you want to pick what's fit for purpose. And while I'm here also, um, they all have different absorption rates. And by that I mean that... Um, you know how much moisture they soak up from your paint all paint is obviously moist so that moisture is going to be soaked up by whatever you're painting on some art papers for example um like the the paper um it's going to soak up more moisture which can actually cause your paper to buckle and ripple because the as the moisture then dries it pulls the paper and, and it buckles and ripples so i mean watercolor paper obviously is designed for it so it'll work better um but you know i've i've painted with gouache and stuff on these papers so again it's about just finding what's fit for purpose if you want to paint on paper find a paper that's designed to do that um if if you're going for a canvas or canvas pads then a top tip is to look for something that's been primed um um it'll be called gesso so this one's been gesso primed um especially for painting with acrylics and other paints and basically what primed means is that the, the the surface has been prepared so it won't soak up as much paint it's the same way like when you're painting your house you put an undercoat on um you know you do your sanding oh, fun stuff um and then you put an undercoat on and then you put your main coat on so it's kind of like you're looking for something that's oh look there's a painting i did um, you're looking for something that's got a pre-coat on it so that what that means is that when you paint on it the pre-coat has already sort of covered it got all the moisture sorted and put a barrier between it so that what you're painting on doesn't soak up as much paint all right now that said I say again fit for purpose unless you want your paint your paper or whatever you're painting on to soak up the moisture because you can get different effects from that as well so it's really key to just think about what you'd like to create what what's your end goal what's your purpose and then finding what's best 
um, for that. I mean, are you going to want to um, frame it, you know, later and give it to someone as a gift perhaps, then paper and you can paint it to the size you want, might be better. Um, or are you just practicing? Canvas pads are awesome for just practicing on. Um, or do you want to create a finished piece that you can just hang straight on the wall, in which case you want to go for your framed canvas? Um, so pick what's right for you and, you know, what you want to create. So that deals with something to paint on. Um, now we want to deal with um, what you'll paint with, so brushes and paints. Um, so the second question that Brenda asked was, what brushes should I use? Now I've got a lot of brushes and you can see loads of them on either side of me. Oh my gosh, there's a bajillion different types of brushes and I'm, I'm honestly, I'm like a kid in a candy store. Books and art supplies, I cannot go past them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the truth is you don't need that many. You really don't. I paint for a living and I have too many brushes. Um, you can only use one at a time, right? <laughs> Um, now you can create a whole painting with just one brush if you want to um, and many of the paintings that I teach in paint club use only three or four brushes you know all you need is a, a selection a small selection of brushes and a few different shapes and sizes um, and you're good to go um, you know and now you may be thinking oh but which brushes and which shapes and sizes yep I know I understand there's a lot of different types of brushes available and different for you know each one has get, does different techniques and effects um and there's also different shapes and sizes you know and I go into that much more in the video um and the pdf and I, in the video I actually show you which ones I use and the just the small selection that you need so um I won't go into that here today um if you want a little bit more detail of the exact brushes then um, type video and I will share the link with you as well. Hi, Brenda. Um, I'm just going to watch this after work. I'm answering all your questions for you <laughs> that you asked in Paint Club, our Q&A. Um, so, yeah, there's loads of varieties of brushes. Um, um, and, and yeah, I, I cover that. I'll give you a list of my recommended brushes. They're that, just a short collection in the PDF. So if you want that, just type PDF. In the comments and I will share that with you. So the third question Brenda asked was what's the best paint? And the answer is a little bit similar to brushes. There's loads of varieties and brands and grades but you don't need the most expensive ones. Just stick with the student brands, the student grade ones, they're great quality and they're a much more affordable option. All right just start with a few basic colors. You don't need all of them. <laughs> there are lots of colors you don't need all of them and and in fact I recommend you don't get all of them because it's much better if you learn how to mix colors yourself um, you know you'll learn a little bit more um, at the same time so you know with just red yellow and blue you can actually mix all the other colors yep all the other colors Plus you add black and white and then you can get all the tones and shades of all the colors as well. So you actually really going to need to start with five, those five basic colors. Um, now, which is my favorite? Brenda also asked, which is my favorite? Um, now, when I started Heart for Art and started teaching painting um, online and in the studio, I basically went out and I bought one of everything. <laughs> I wanted to get the most appropriate and the most affordable without losing quality so I literally went out and I bought one of everything and I experimented with them all it took me ages it took me months um, just to see which ones I thought were the best what gave the great results what were you know um, good good value for money I, I tested everything and I concluded that's how I that's basically how I concluded that the student grade ones were great uh, and perfect in everything. Um, so, and I also found my favorite as well, which is the FAS, FAS, Fine Art Student, is what that stands for. These are my favorite. They're a great choice because they've got so many lovely bright colors, 
lots of colors to choose from um, and they you can paint with them and they get bright colors they're easy to work with that the paint is easy to work with they come in these handy small bottles they dry quickly um, you know these small bottles I find that tubes just run out too quickly I like to use a lot of paint and they run out too quickly so I like a what are they 250 mils 500 mils yeah this this many mils <laughs> Um, and they're affordable, so it's a great combination of everything. I really enjoy these. Um, they're really, really good. Um, FAS Fine Art Acrylics. Um, I've got all the details in the PDF and the video as well. Um, and I chose acrylic. Obviously, you can get watercolor, oils. There's lots of different mediums to use. I chose acrylic because it's the easiest paint to work with. Watercolors... Um, you kind of need to know what you're doing with those. Um, you, you know, it's a little harder to use if you're starting from scratch. And oils as well, there's a little bit more to know about those. And it takes so long to dry. <laughs> um, you know, you can do some really great things with watercolors and oils, but I just don't have the patience to wait for it to dry. I want my painting done now. <laughs> Um, so my favorite medium is acrylic because it's so easy to use, making it just perfect if you're painting, especially if you're painting for the first time. Much easier to fix stuff as well. Um, you know, if you don't like something, you just dry it, paint over it straight away with a hairdryer. Oils, you can't do that. Watercolor, you can't really paint over stuff because it gets darker. You know, you can fix boo-boos and things you don't like. You know, I paint stuff all the time and I think, oh, I don't like that color. Paint it white, dry it, start again easy um, acrylic is the most forgiving uh, medium I found and just the easiest to work with so that's why I chose acrylics um, you know specifically for teaching I do a lot of teaching but I also it's it's just as if, if you're learning and you're just starting out it's the easiest medium to start with if you want to then go and explore watercolor and acrylic awesome you know but I, if you're just starting I recommend um, starting with acrylics um hang on i'm just looking at the some questions are the frame canvas primed or do you have to prime them melissa's asking are the frame canvas primed um generally they are if you're shopping for stuff they'll have a little bit of detail i don't know if you can see that oh there's, a, there's always a little bit of detail on the canvas that tells you whether it's primed or not um, generally I will go for something that's been triple primed because the more primed, the more coats you put on it, the less it's going to absorb your paint when you paint on it because the primer has already done that. So always look for the detail um, and um, look for, you know, primed on there. What does this one say? So it's all sized with acrylic gesso is what this says. Sized and primed. So, I don't, it's kind of the same thing. Um, I don't know why they call it sized. Um, I must look into that one day, actually. But sizing is kind of prepping, priming. Um, just look for a gesso or primed. Gesso is the um, paint. It's kind of like paint, but it's specifically designed to prepare surfaces. So you're looking for gesso, the term gesso or primed um on the details of the canvas you can buy them unprimed um or gessoed and that's purely because if you want a dry brush effect you know if you want really dry effect then you don't want it to be primed you want there to be a little bit of a little bit more absorption you know in the canvas um, but generally speaking most canvases that you can buy are already primed so but just be aware of that um, see the canvas pad also says acrylic gesso primed so um, oh and then it has it in French and Spanish as well so there you go it's primed in English Spanish and French lovely so look for that um, 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 Leah says I hope you can look maybe sometime people say oh they're on brush and new canvas because they don't need it anymore oh, on neighborly Yes, she's saying look on Neighbourly. Sometimes people sell sell their brushes and, and new canvases because they don't need it anymore. Yes, awesome tip, Leah. 
Um, secondhand art supplies are amazing sometimes, and it's the same. I've noticed that it's the same with ski gear. People will buy it. They'll get all excited and go, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to do this. And then I'll have a go and just decide, oh, it's not for me. And then they've got all this gear and they just don't need it anymore. So um, Neighbourly Marketplace, Trade Me, any of those kinds of places are a great way to find um, cheaper stuff as well. Good tip. Thank you, Leah, for sharing that. Um, okay, so that was my first favourite type of paint is the fine art, supply, uh, fine art student paint. Um, which is really affordable. Um, I think I, I get it wholesale, but I think you, you're looking at like 11 to $15, depending on where you shop, and you get heaps of paint. That'll last you ages, unless you're painting every day and being all Jackson Pollock. Um, <laughs> my second type of fa a paint, favorite paint, now this may come as a surprise. It's actually house paint. Yeah. Um, but I don't go buy in big liters, test pots, resin test pots. I'm sure um, all the other paint types do test pots as well. Now, this is my favorite, one of my favorite colors. It's Pahutakawa, Pahutakawa color. Now, I bought um, my first pot of Pahutakawa way back when I was still learning to paint many, many years ago, and I just didn't quite know how to get the right colour. So I went in and I was like, oh, they've got a Pudakawa colour. They've got some cool names. But test pots, they're cheap. Um, uh, yeah, they're cheaper than a lot of tube paints, you know. Uh, I bought a couple the other day, $5.50 each, and you get, I don't know, that actually says 60 mils. There you go, 60 mils, and that will last you ages, and they're just handy small pots oh this one's quite tight okay there we go handy small pots there's loads of different colors and just look how beautifully look how delicious that color is potakawa color okay one potakawa color there's about 40 different brands of um, varieties of Pahutakawa, but they're just handy little pots. Loads, honestly, there's walls and walls of different colors to choose from when you go into your paint shop. Um, so test pots, they give super, super bright colors. Okay, that's why I love painting with these. Um, they just give the most brightest colors, but they have the added bonus that you don't have to then spray varnish, spray or varnish your um, painting afterwards to protect it. Um, some people don't bother, but I like to protect my paintings um, from damage or fading, you know, sun fading as well. So often when I'm painting in acrylics, I'll spray them or varnish them to protect them. But these are house paints. If they can stand the elements outside, they can stand being inside and do not need any extra protection. So that takes one step out and one step cost out. <gasps> Brilliant. Um, so, so, like, let me show you. Now, this is one that I painted. It's called Dancing Dolphins. This is painted with resin house paints. All right. So, this is just gives you an idea of all the different colors. And, of course, again, you don't need to get all of them. If you just get your basic colors, you can start mixing your other colors. So, all those purples there, I've actually mixed using the reds and blues. All the oranges I've and yellows I've used, um, I've mixed using um, the yellows and reds. So I think there is actually some Pahutakawa in there somewhere, though, on my dolphins. Dolphins with Pahutakawa. So I call this one Dancing Dolphins. Um, just going on a complete stray. It's from a photo that my dad took while we were on the boat, and he's reflected in the top. He was on the bowsprit, and that's my dad, and I think, is that my mum? It could be my mum as well. My dad's taking the photo as we were watching the dolphins. We grew up on, oh, I love dolphins. I love dolphins. Um, Leah's asking if that's our next painting. No, Leah, I'm sorry, it's not. I've tried so hard to make this a paint club painting, but there's just so much detail in this. It would take too long. It would take days to do it. Um, I am actually thinking of selling this painting. It is very dear to my heart because of that connection with sailing and my youth and loving dolphins. Um, but I am actually thinking of selling this one at the moment. I'm raising funds to move house and move north. But that's another aside. Um, 
Oh, Melissa says my garage door and front door is painted with Bahutakawa. Oh my gosh, I love that, Melissa. It's like one of my favorite colors. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, it must look just stunning. <laughs> That is so cool. I don't know why people paint their houses boring colors when there are so many amazing colors in the world. <laughs> Yay. All right. So we've talked about uh, having something to paint on and something to paint with. You're also going to need another few bits and pieces, um, like something to put your paint on, for example, a paint palette or whatever. Um, I've got a few ideas on that and something to wash your brushes in. Um, I've included all the extra bits and pieces um, that you need in the PDF and the video for you as well. So this is just a brief overview and it's all a little bit more detail in the video and the PDF for you. Plus, I've included tips on where to shop to get best prices. Okay, you can go to the boutique shops or the art supply stores. Oh, but you'll pay a whole lot more. There are better places to shop for exactly the same products, same brand, same name, same everything. Like this bottle of paint, you can buy it three different places and you will pay three different prices. One place you'll pay way too much. So I've included tips on where to shop for the best prices as well in the PDF and the video. Um, um, Patricia says, hi, Patricia. Hi. Um, what was the name of the fixative again to stop fading, etc.? No, it's somewhere in your blogs. Oh, it is, it's just the spray stuff. Um, <laughs> it's upstairs, I haven't got it with me. Um, I'm going to come back to you on that. My mind's just gone blank. What is it called? It's a black bottle and it's got rainbow colors on the front. Coat something coat something coat K O T E. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna write a note down, and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna answer you. I'm gonna go upstairs and look for it. Um, spray coat. Top, is it top coat? I I use it so often and I never look at the name of it. I do apologise. Um, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to post the answer under your question um, as soon as I've finished here. All right. So in the PDF I created, all right, PDF, loads of pages, loads of information, heaps of stuff in here for you. Includes all my recommendations and a complete shopping list. So you can essentially just print this off and go straight to shopping. All right. And in the video, I get a little bit more in depth on everything and I show you everything as well. I literally hold out which brushes, which paint colors, everything, and I show you as well. So if you want just the shopping list, type PDF in the comments. If you want the whole video in a little bit more detail, type video in the comments and I'll share that with you. It all just, it just makes it super quick and easy so you can get to the fun part of painting first and not get lost in, oh my gosh, what do I need? All right. Um, so they're both free, by the way. I, they're both absolutely free. I don't want anyone who wants to create and get creative to miss out because they're not sure what they need. So, um, you know, these will help you get a better understanding of what to get um, and get the right supplies and just make it quicker and easier to get the right supplies as well and get your painting and doing the fun stuff, right? I don't want anyone to miss out on that. So I'm just trying to make it easy for you. So to get the PDF, my complete artist supply list and shopping guide, type PDF in the comments and I will send you the link to download it. And to watch the video, type video in the comments and I will send you the link to watch that, all right? Now, if you're in Paint Club, um, you may know a lot of what's in there already because I teach it as we paint. I teach it in Paint Club. There's loads of extra tutorials in there. But it, there is going to be a few extra little bits and pieces that you might pick up, especially around the where to shop um, for your supplies as well. Um, and I've included a few extra tips. Also, um, so I hope that's been helpful. Um Thank you for your questions and Brenda for her questions as well. Um, let me know what's been your biggest takeaway from 
this video from today um, or if you have any other questions. Um, so what we talked about today, um, we talked about, um, you know, the fact that you don't have to spend a fortune. You do not have to spend a fortune. You just, you don't need to pay for the expensive stuff or buy the most expensive stuff to get the best quality. Student grade materials are absolutely fine. They are really good quality and much, much more affordable. Um, and you will still get amazing results with those. Okay. Um, and what's the best to paint on? We talked about the fact that whatever is best for you, there are lots of different options available. So decide what you actually want to do, what you want to achieve, um, and then pick whatever fits that purpose. You know, what something that fits that's fit for purpose, essentially. Um, but do um, if you want, if I mean, unless you specifically want something that is not primed, I highly recommend that you always look for something that says primed or gessoed or sized so that the you know it's been the surface has been prepared for you um, and it's easier to paint on as far as brushes go what should you get um, we talked about just how many different brushes there are but that you only need a selection of a few you don't need all the brushes just a few different sizes and shapes uh, is all you need um, and again stick to the student grade material uh, brands you know student grades um, for those they're great quality and more affordable as well. Um, and we talked about my favorites, fine art student, FAS. Just look look for the FAS. That one's a bit faded. It's been, I don't know, it's been in the sun. So FAS, there's the brand there. FAS acrylic. Those are my favorites. They're awesome to work with. And, of course, resine test pots if you don't want to mix your own colors there's a bajillion honestly a bajillion different colors there's walls and walls of colors and they stack really beautifully on top of each other as well i don't know if that's useful but <laughs> um uh, uh and also more affordable as well five dollars fifty last time i got some um and of course i told you about the pdf um, and the video, um, I've just touched the surface of what you need to today. If you want an actual list of get these brushes and these paints and this, uh, and a little bit more explanation of what each are and an actual visual of them, then you can get the PDF. Um, just type PDF in the comments. Um, you know, if you want help getting started with the right supplies, just type PDF in the comments or video in the comments and I'll hook you up with my recommended list and the must-haves. It's basically, it's a, the supply list is, is a must-haves, just the basics. So the basic brushes you need, the basic colors you need, the basic extra supplies you need, and that's it. No more, so you don't have to spend a fortune, okay, and you can get started. And then the video goes a little bit deeper into all of those. Um, Melissa says the paint idea is student grade and house paint. Yes, paint with test pots. Oh, that's that's a good takeaway, isn't it? I, I was so excited when I discovered test pots. I mean, as an artist, I was like, hallelujah, and like just worshipping at this wall of colour. It was so exciting. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Lovely. Um, so, yes, thank you for watching today. I really hope that's been helpful. Um, if you have any other questions, post them in the comments. Otherwise, let me know if you want the PDF or the video. And I will, as soon as I'm done here, I will flick those through to you. So thanks for watching today. Uh, don't forget to like and share and follow and subscribe and all of that stuff to hear more tips and how to learn new painting skills um, and how to just live your most creative life um, and share it with other people because creativity needs to be spread. Um, and yeah, so thanks for watching again today and hope to see you behind a paintbrush very, very soon. Mwah. Bye.